All praise, all honor, all glory to the supreme intellect of the universe, Yah, our forefathers, Yah, Abraham, Yitzchak, we are called. Thanking the merciful King for allowing us to make this video today is a very important video that we put out because um, I'm really, I live in a hole, you know, but someone suggested that I read or listen to Polite's new video that he did, which was called um, Explorations of, of, of the Hebrews or something along them lines. And initially, when I started to watch the video, I, I, I was watching the video, and I seen Polite say he wasn't able to rebuttal because we told him he couldn't rebuttal. So initially, my heart, being a person of truth and Emmett, um, I had to turn it off. Because now we see that most of the people are understanding that the information that the Hebrew Israelites brought that day was some powerful information. And even so, that even some uh, um, Egyptologists or comedic commentators are saying that. Um, we have people that's near and dear to us that's asking us to actually send them the emails of some of the um, the slides. So we're sending them the slides and a lot of brothers are using these slides to destroy a lot of the brothers that try to attack the Hebrew faith. Um, but when I seen it, I was turned off. I, I can't watch lies. But it was suggested by uh, Divine Prospect to find you that I watch this video. So I'm watching clips of the video and I'm shaking my head because they got explosions after this stuff and none of this stuff makes sense so I want to show you I did a portion I did a little slides to combat some of that but I want you to know Yisrael we are in war and I don't mean go bash an Egyptologist or somebody I mean we have to defend our name and in that we have to represent the creator to the highest extent because now people are trying to make us look bad and take away my integrity so anytime I have my integrity on the line, I will stand up. And there's a lot of brothers and sisters that would like me to stand up for the name of the Creator. And um, Polite has a new video where he's calling him and Sarnetta and Chaka Atmos. They're the new Israelite gods. They're the Trinity. Well, with me, I don't play with stuff like that. I can't be associated with nothing like that. I'm, I'm a, a God-fearing person, an individual. And I hear the attacks and the, the, that they're making against our brothers. And it's kind of weird because as an individual... Besides all the glamour and the smoke that we have in the conscious community, um, I was one of the realest brothers to Polite. In fact, Polite reached out to me to be a member of the New Covenant. Um, and, you know, his, he had a sick daughter. And, 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 and I was the one that, you know, would call him every day as a brother to check up on the daughter, daughter. I would hang up the phone. I would go into prayers and ask for the Most High to save her. And as a person or individual, I would think that would resonate into an individual's heart, but it didn't. I see that we still playing shady games. And what happened to me is that when I watched the debate and before the debate, everything that led up to the, the buildup of the debate, I protected Polite. They were actually going to do a protest at the event. It was a few brothers that were used to be New Covenant that uh, um, called a few brothers and they were going to go out there and protest the event. And I called off the protest of the event out of respect so the event could be very um, professional. In fact, they wanted us to take cheap shots at Shaka, um, playing videos of him licking a straw and all this other stuff. We did none of that. We came in very professional. We stuck to the information that time. Even when things were, were distorted and taken away from us, even when time was taken away from us, we still remained professional. We didn't protest. We didn't get angry. We didn't get mad. We didn't riot. We as Hebrew Israelites maintain our composure. So I want you to listen to this because today we're going to go into it. The name of this lecture, this is a short lecture, it's called Exposing APEP in the conscious community. Now, you ask who is Apep? Of course, Apep is polite. Apep was one of the ancient Egyptian deities who embodied chaos, which is Isfet, in Egyptian, and was the opponent of light and Ma'at, order and truth. So Apep was this deity that would go against Ra, or who you will see here is Ma'u, which is the incarnation of, of Ra, which was the, the, the pet of Tutmosis. He appears as an art in a giant serpent. So Apep appears as this giant serpent, this dual-talking individual that causes chaos and misleads people. Was the first mentioned in the 8th dynasty, and he was honored in the name of the 14th dynasty of King Apepi, who was a greater Hyksos king Apophis. So we are looking at foreigners, and, and, and Apep represent the foreign or the foreign invaders that came in and embodied and tried to create chaos inside of the Egyptian dynasty. Now, the reason why I bring this in is because Polite himself does not stand with Egyptian doctrines. I want to continue. Now, before the debate, we heard this numerous times. Once on Sinatra's couch, and also we heard it um, on an interview I did with Kalam L. 
And the thing that's very interesting about this debate is, even if Yash Rundle is right about everything they say, they still can't win. Now, I want to play that back. And the thing that's very interesting about this debate is, even if Yash Rundle is right about everything they say, they still can't win. All right. Now, this is a statement by Uncle Keck. Uncle Keck says, even if we're right at the debate, we still can't win. Because he goes on and says, and set parameters, and we're makeup artists, and all of this. But he slipped up and said something that's very imperative that we have to understand. Because what happened is before the debate, our voice wasn't being heard. So we went to, um, we went to Nola Ledge Radio. We went to Kalam Show to present the truth. Now, I want to go to this because I, asked, I sent this a text to Sonetta. And this text, because when you listen to the people about the debate, talking about the debate, they say, oh, the Egyptians never got the, uh, the charges. They never got the charges. Now, if you listen to Polite's opening argument, he's speaking clearly about we never got charges. How are we supposed to respond when we never got charges? Now, here you see the debate, uh, the date right here, which is January the 17th, where we gave them the charges weeks before. So in order for it to make it public so it didn't seem as if we were hiding the charges, we went to the public, I went on to Kalams, I went to Know the Ledge and showed them the charges. You know where you did not see the charges at? You did not see it on House of Consciousness. And there's a reason why you did not see it on House of Consciousness, because if you seen the charges on House of Consciousness, then Polite's argument in the way to get out of the debate will be null and void. He would actually have to defend himself at the debate now. So now it says, expose him polite on YouTube, right? And this is the sign letter. Post this, please. And then we send him another video. Now here goes the video. you never seen this before. Yeah, brother, while the elders are here, what are you being on trial for? I'm quite sure you got the, um, the accusations where they put you on trial. Yes, sir, Professor Small. I think that should be left for the debate. I think that what they're on trial for should be left for the debate because we don't have both communities here. It is the other community that is going to put them on trial. And so they're the ones that have to say what they're on trial for, really. Uh, and so that I would leave that mystery for the debate. Let the people come and find out why they're on trial. So it's polite running scared. Did Kimmet receive the notice of persecution? It's one thing if they just, if this is just a verbal argument. But once I get an email correspondence uh, from Divine Prospect, co signed by Nasi Yasufel, two people on your team. Uh, if we have the right to teach our people about the committed doctrine. <laughs> you see, he's laughing. <laughs> yeah, Hold on, you see, he's laughing, but he knows the charges. This video is sent way before, but he knows the charges. But he didn't go into all the... All, so now he's asking for an email signed by me. Doesn't make sense. The correspondence between the um, the letters, so we don't have drama, was just between the vibe. At the debate, he says he don't know no charges, and everybody's buying this up because Apep's job, the serpent job, is to cause chaos and confusion. Oh, that's number three of this shit, right? So I'm saying, yo, what the fuck is this? Y'all niggas, stand, they be saying homosexuality. You know what they said? Yo, why we gotta go over the things that that we were saying in the previous debates? Hold on, King. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. The Kimmy is on trial. Why is it that there's a gunshot on every corner? Now you hold on, brothers and sisters. You be the judge. Check out the email. Watch me shoot this. Watch me shoot this Says Jonathan is the only soldier ready to battle. Jonathan was the only one that was ready to go to war, no matter what. The debate. Let the people come and find out why they're on trial. Why is it that there's a gunshot on every corner? Watch me shoot this one. 
This was a video that the conscious community was supposed to receive in order to set the tone for the debate. So all that, we didn't know what the charges was. The, these were sent as via, via email. It was sent through text. It was sent through multiple different people for Sonetta and Polite to po put post this. The reason why it wasn't posted, it wasn't because Sonetta did not want to post it. It's because it wouldn't have sit, sat right with Polite's argument that he didn't receive any charges that the people were eating up at the beginning of the debate. Now we know that that's false. Let us continue. Did Polite and Amaran Squad know to use the internet for rebuttal? The reason why we asked this is because when I was watching that video that he did, he said that Devon said, I can't rebuttal. And his face lit up. He said, what you mean I can't use the internet? I don't have the right to defend myself. So he said at the debate, he was surprised that Devon Prospect told him he could not use the internet to create a PowerPoint and do research while we're debating. His face was surprised. This is Apep, the serpent now. I want you to think about this. Let's really think about this. A man that sponsors the event, is sponsored by House of Consciousness and New Covenant, says that he didn't rebuttal because he was told he couldn't rebuttal. He wasn't allowed to do that. He said, so I can't defend myself? What man is going to lie to a group and a nation full of people, thousands of people that watch him, and say he was told that he can't defend himself? Then he went on to say that he couldn't use the internet, and he was surprised that he couldn't do PowerPoints on site. Because that's a rule I made up. The reason why is because in the last debate with Ali Muhammad, when Ali Muhammad was up there, Polite was in the back researching some of the information he said on the computer and, and, and clipping and pasting and putting together a rebuttal. I thought that was disingenuous. I thought that as a man that's upright and knowledgeable, when you have a debate, you're supposed to go off the cuff of what you know. Not go and research stuff while another man is up there bringing his presentation. So we took out the internet. So I want to read a little bit of this email going back and forth so you know that this is another lie because he acted like he was shocked he couldn't use the internet and in, and in fact he agreed that you couldn't use the internet please confirm all this right this is polite this is not suit internet included this is number one he said brother jonathan requests to use the internet during his presentation only not after um, um presentation his data is online so he's saying that only reason he want to use the internet is because Brother Jonathan needs the information to, to use cloud. He needs the internet for cloud. His presentation is on cloud. So why is he telling you that he's surprised about this whole internet and he couldn't defend himself? But Polite thinks you're stupid. He thinks you're very ignorant. And I'm starting to believe that a lot of people in the conscious community are zombies. And they follow things and they have very immalleable minds where they are picking up on things that doesn't make sense. It's almost like people are going back into Christianity. That we are blindly following people when a man said, oh, I couldn't rebuttal and people believe him. Now it goes on. Peace King, thanks for the reply. The internet, this is Divine Prospect. The internet is, is fine for Jonathan's presentation. But after that, no. So Plight agreed on the phone. He's like, you know what? We have books there. So we can use our books. So anything you're saying, we got the books. We all have stacks of books. We use our books to rebuttal and we come before the audience. We do it old school. Polite was involved and he was very happy with this. Now here goes Uncle Cat after the debate. Because now they're making excuses why they didn't respond to any of these questions. Because how are we having a debate and nobody responds to the questions? Go ahead. I'm about to clip it right now. Right now, I'm not going to stand and waste time on claims that the Egyptians didn't build the pyramids. That's like, that's like foolishness. I'm not going to stand there and refute the, the cannibal hammer. That's foolishness. You know damn no well that African people ain't sitting around eating eight people. That's, that's like a white boy claim. Think about that for a minute. So some claims that was made didn't even make sense that we should even have to deal with. It's just ridiculous, and that shows the level of foolishness that was being presented. All right. Now, here goes Uncle Cat. Now, this is after they quote-unquote victory, because they're claiming victory. 
So they're sending video after video explaining to the people why the Armin Ra squad and the Nasu didn't refute any of these claims against the Hebrews. Why didn't they refute or attack or even say that there was, well, he could have said that there was no cannibalism at the debate. That's all he had to say. At least he tried to refute it. They didn't even attempt to. But he says, why would you think that, why would I have to refute a cannibal hymn like you think the Africans ate people? Well, what is the cannibal hymn? He said, the Egyptians built the pyramid. And later on in the same thing, I said, well, prove the Egyptians built the pyramid. And he couldn't. He stuck. Because there's no proof that the Egyptians built the pyramids. And if you go back with um, um, Egypt Revisited, you look at Egyptian, uh, Egyptian Revisited by Sir, um, Ivan Van Sertima, Sheikh Ati Diop in his introduction, what I shared at the debate, says that the Egyptians did not build the pyramids. So our ancestors, who he's always bigging up, said the Egyptians did not build the pyramids. This was placed at the debate, but they could answer none of this stuff. What you're going to realize, if you haven't seen it, this is the most lopsided debate as far as information you have ever seen. You have never seen a group of people, and by, by the way, they did use their internet to rebuttal us, and to try to try to come up with information and rebuttal us. That's why they came up with three. At all that time, that's the only thing they could try to come up with an attempt. Two, two to three attempts. Polite came out initially with the first one, the attempt to rebuttal um, 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 people marrying their daughters. So he came up with an attempt to rebut. But he was busted using the internet to figure it out. So that's why you don't see no more rebuttals from Polite. So they claiming victory about the debate, right? What is a debate? Then you have to ask yourself, what is a debate? A debate is contention in an argument. An argument what? Going back and forth. A dispute, a controversy. Things that's controversial. A discussion, especially the discussion of questions of public interest in parliament or any assembly. So if the public wanted to know about cannibalism, that was in the first debate, they wanted to know about um, 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 homosexuality, all of these things they could have answered or attempt to answer, but inadvertently they're admitting not to debate in us. Because they said we don't have to refute anything, so according to debates, they did not debate us. So how can they claim victory? Ask yourself this question. So when I ask you all the stuff that the Hebrew Israelites presented, you could go through a whole plethora of stuff, right? And then I ask you, well, what were some of the things that the comedic side used against the Hebrew Israelites that was powerful? What is, well, Polite brought out a casket. He went to Egypt. What does that have to do with Kemet on trial? Not a thing. But I'm going to go and show you how they also played the introduction and tricked us and tried to manipulate these people. Now, debate footage regarding the cannibal hymn, right? Okay. Polite said something on his uh, um, last video. He said that Nazi, and he said it like 20 times. And I'm going to show you how he's a snake and how clever he is. He says, why didn't Nazi use the video or where I was at in, my, uh, in the presentation that I did at the debate? All he did was go online and click in the cannibal hymn and posted it up on, on, on Kalam L's um, Chasing the Shadows. If you get a chance, look at Chasing the Shadows on Kalam L radio station, right? On his, on his um, YouTube channel, Chasing Shadows. Another thing that introduces Apep the Serpent into the community. We got to listen. Now... He says, why didn't he clip that from the video? Why didn't he take it from the debate? Well, let me show you why. Number 10, House of Conscience has exclusive rights to record, right? We were supposed to try to record. We were going to try to record, but we couldn't. Under no circumstances will any other videotaping by any other party be permissible. Permissible. The raw copy will be provided to the clients inside of 72 hours of the event. Now, this is a contract we agreed upon. We never got to sign because... Somebody didn't want to sign the contract. Now he's going to blame it on us. But I got a, a call from um, Divine Prospect. He got there at 1 o'clock. We all met up there. We got there at 1.30 to sign the contract. All the Hebrew Israelites, every single person was there at least by 1.30. Except Zion Lexi probably came in about 2. We were there early. And they always tell you about, oh, the Hebrew Israelites are the reason why I started two hours late. But they never tell you I'm a Roscoe. I was three hours late. But what they are going to say is, no, we were there. We were in the lobby. But interesting enough, if you were in the lobby, you should have texted Polite because Polite was worried about y'all making it on time. And um, 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 Reggie was complaining that y'all weren't there. So next time, just, just text your group 
and tell them. But they're not going to tell you that because they want to make it seem like it's all against the Hebrew Israelites. And it's about time that we have our own voice. Nobody's going to block out my voice no more. Nobody's going to block out any of these brothers' voice no more. We're going to transmit what we want to and project into the air for people to hear. And whether they hear or they forbear, we're going to put it out there. You're not stopping us no more. Now... It says within 72 hours of the event. Now, polite is funny because we didn't get no, the only Hebrew that ever got a copy, were two Hebrews that got a copy, were two weeks after the event, when these brothers were already making videos. They already had it, making videos. So that's why I said, so he said, oh, so he don't know the cannibal hymn, and then he goes to Black Lotus and says, Black Lotus should have told him how to translate the cannibal hymn. No, what happened at the debate is I seen when he was off of sight. When I seen it at the, I knew exactly where he was because I know the pictures, I know the images, I studied cannibal him very well. But what he's going to not tell you, he's not going to tell you that he said I wasn't at the temple of Eunice, I was at the temple of Teddy. But what he's not going to tell you is the temple of Eunice and the temple of Teddy has the exact same cannibal him with a couple of variances. So in front of the standard eye or the regular or naked eye, it appear that you standing in front of the same exact text. But that's another diversion tactic because the reason why I showed the picture is to show that he should have responded to the cannibal him because he was there on the trip and was able to do the research. But he's diverting you away from it, telling you why did not I put the original picture. It's another tactic. Instead of answering, why didn't you respond to the cannibal him when you was in Egypt in front of the cannibal him? So that means your, your trip was for naught. It was just a vacation. You wasn't really doing no uh, field work. Come on, brother. Let's be real about this. This is what I'm showing people. You took a video. You responded to nothing we said. It took you almost two and a half weeks to respond. And they are still trying to respond to the information. That's how bad we are. So Hebrew Israelites, stand up. We showed up. We came deep that time. We came in the name of the Creator. And we did what we came in there to do. Imagine we spitting information, brothers lined up with scrolls and books and um, laptops and all of this and can't refute nothing and you get the first rebuttals almost a two and a half weeks later from APEP. But they're calling themselves victorious. Imagine an Israelite not answering something about the Bible and the Bible's on trial and all of a sudden two weeks later I make videos talking about how I should have answered that, I could have answered it. You wouldn't have gave us that. You wouldn't have gave us that. So now, we see that no Hebrew Israelite had any right to a film, but the thing about it is, um, Black Magic actually released the video of the debate, a portion of the video, the debate of the day after. So none of the contract was being fulfilled, even if we signed or not, they still didn't have it in their intentions to do right by us, by any means. And I still don't have a copy of the debate. Now, in Polite's opening argument, he showed that me and Zion Lex don't agree on, on dates. He showed that we had conflict in information. And he showed that I said something about King James and high-fiving people on the butt. I said that two years ago. But this is the weigh-in right here. Right here is the weigh-in. Why is this important? Why is the footage in the weigh-in important? Because what House of Consciousness gave you was a 30-minute snippet of three hours of a weigh-in. And they remove certain things at the way in so they can use it against us at the debate. So the people wouldn't know. But let me show you what they never put back at the debate. Because this would have diffused his whole thing on saying that we are against each other. And we don't have same, the similar information. And our information is different in variances. You dang right. Because we have different schools. But I want to show you something. This is why he took this, he took this clip out and did not play this because he would not have an argument, an opening introduction. And then the next thing you know, we have a brother going back into crypto and starts calling MFs and all these curse words and niggas and we call this the conscious community? Right. We, we, we as a brother, we said our brothers in the comedic community, he came and said, these niggas, these niggas, but he asked off camera for this to be a collegiate debate where we can have the colleges to watch. So then he goes up and puts up a flyer. Well, this might show that flyer, Pete. He got a silly picture of me up there. A silly picture of Hotshaw because he's emotional. 
Then he automatically puts a star David, knowing it's controversial in the Hebrew Israelite community because of the vision in our group. But we're here to say, anything I said to you, brother, anything I said to you, anything I said to you, anything I said to you, brothers, anything I said to ISUPK, we all stand up as men and we ask for forgiveness for one another for going against one another. So we do the So then, is an intricate piece to the puzzle. If that was played, then polite saying that I have video or you saying against something or somebody else, another, wouldn't make no sense. Let us think now. Who was being a serpent? Who was being crafty? If the Israelites already came out and said, you know what, everything I said against you, my brother, I apologize. Because we didn't agree on everything, and we still don't to this day. At least we're genuine about it. And at least we came before the public. Well, this is this whole argument. People are like, oh, the Hebrew Israelites don't agree. Oh, oh, Polite said, you had a star David. You had a star David. So why is the star David controversy? The star David was controversial because you put it behind everybody and Elder Gabbard doesn't wear a star David. That was the point, brother. But you like to play games. The serpent likes to be deceptive. So he removes this because he needs this piece out of it so he can show that the Israelites are still disunified or they're not unified at all. But I'm going to show you that, guess what? That's not true. And is it, if so, if he attacks us for not agreeing with each other and they pretend like they agree with each other on everything, he's being disingenuous about his original statement in the introduction when he was tearing the Israelites apart. He thought he was. Because he's saying we're different. I want to show you some stuff. Now, here goes dealing on chronology. He shows that me and Zion Lex had a 200-year two, um, chronological um, breakdown that was off. And he said, when you're surrounded around a myth, that's the only how you can have chronology off. Well, anybody that studies history knows that's not true. Anytime you get beyond 500 BC, you start to get in speculation, and then you start to have the different variances of timelines. There is many Egyptian chrono chrono chronological timelines, and he knows this. But he thinks you're stupid enough not to know this. So to the naked eye, his attack seems powerful because I said 12, 12, um, um, 2000 B.C. and Zion said 1800 B.C. Oh, they don't even know. That's when they surround their stuff based off of mythos. So let's read what um, John Henry Clark has to say, right? Um, the dynastic period, right, and this is from the John Henry Clark, an overview of black African history. The dynastic period lasted for about 6,000 B.C. until three, uh, th 300 B.C. These dynastic periods were divided into four kingdoms, the Old Kingdom, Dynasty 1 through 4, Middle Kingdom, Dynasty 11 through 14, um, Empire Dynasties 18 through 20, the Sai uh, Dynasty, the 26, 27, and Persia since the time has rarely been free of foreign rule. Prior to the invasion, the Greeks in, in 1325 um, was called Kim or Kemet. And he goes in and starts breaking down. Now it says, all these dates, approximately 6,000 years ago, in ancient Egyptian, the conquerors of Upper and Lower Egypt, the first pharaoh of Egypt, Aha Mene or Menes, who reigned according to various Egyptologists, begins anywhere from 5,776 BCE to 3,300 BCE. Now you're talking almost 2,500 years now. But APAC can only pull that off. But if you're a scholar, you know it's variations in time. And this is the thing that he don't understand. So he put me against a brother, and I, so I said, he made y'all disillusional. Y'all not even together on timelines. But real scholars aren't. Because there's different information. And when you study this, see, Polite knows that most people in the conscious community don't study. He knows they're into the hoopla. He knows that they're into stuff that may seem deep on, deep on the outside, but when you really start to look and investigate, it really makes no sense. That's what a serpent does. It beguiles you. Now, does Amin Ra squad agree with one another? Now, this is on January 21st, right? Now, this is before the debate. Remember, the debate is February 8th. Now, here goes Asar Amhotep and Jonathan. Well, I was up at nighttime when I wrote it. And there goes Jonathan always responds, the discussion has been ended. You are just talking now. The upper resi area of the map is still south of, uh, south of Saul. Shaking my head, I'm going to finish. I'm going, to, I'm going fishing. 
He's talking to I saw Amotep. I saw Amotep replies to Jonathan and says, as have been stated to you a thousand times already, it is only south to us in our modern orientation due to European and the scientific community saying so, and you agreeing with them. The e ancient Egyptians did not know or care about how Europeans saw the world. This map clearly shows how the ancient Egyptians saw the world, and they saw it with the source of the Nile as their top head beginning, which would be equivalent to our concept of North in the United States. So when you try to interrupt in the explanation given to Neter Kanon, you actually interject a false sense of reality according to ancient Egyptians themselves. So not only were you wrong, you were wrong on one, cultural grounds, two, linguistic grounds, three, textual grounds, and four, uh, uh, cartographic grounds, right? So you should know by now that I am no Hebrew Israelite and making a YouTube video doesn't count for scholarship. And the final analysis demonstrations beats conversation anytime. So he's going in. He's saying that you're wrong on cultural grounds, linguistic grounds, textual grounds, even the maps dealing with the cartoons. So let's go with what Jonathan, Jonathan comes back and does a whole video against my man, I saw Amotep. And correct or incorrect, you be the judge. So now the video's pulled out, they look into the video, he going in against his brother. But you know what? I'm not disingenuous. I know brothers have disagreements. So my argument at a debate, so I never like, why you didn't show the differences? Because that would be disingenuous of me, because I'm not saying that the brothers have to agree with everything. That is a lie, and that is a foolish concept that Polite or APAP created. See, because if we don't agree on everything, basically we can't unify. And that's the divisional tool that they use to separate us. Because we have differences of opinion. And this is why we can't do nothing with Polite or APEP. Because he doesn't want to build with us. Perfect example. He bigs up ISUPK. He says ISUPK is the only real group of Hebrew Israelites. That's funny. You did a video about the 12 time charts. At the debate, you attacked King James. This is all ISUPK you're talking about. But yet you're bigging them up as the real Hebrews. Because what they're doing is they had to create a scene or a scenario where this wasn't the final showdown and they could set up another debate with another Israelite group in the community. Listen to what I'm telling you. Watch what I tell you. I saw Amhotep responds to Jonathan Owens' video. Exactly, this video doesn't further the point because he can't define from the word remtel perspective what their terms mean. If I say resi means heads up, or mehu means submerged below feet, the same, then in the same reading as argued below. Is that the phrase to, to one up? Is below or exareb? Or exareb is ab above? Or to up? You can cite thousands of sources. Until you get the definitions right, you will always be in error. He's killing this man, telling him he don't know metal data. Now, I saw Amotep says, again, this is why I say that to everyone who doesn't understand the basics of linguistics. When trying to articulate ancient Egyptian phenomena, we always be handicapped because they are certain things one knows as a linguist that a layman does not know. Now, he's calling his brother a layman and saying that he doesn't know Metonetta. But this is the same man who came to the debate and was supposed to be this Metaneta guru who came out and started translating all of this stuff. And at the debate, I showed this. Nope, here goes over. I'm going to come back to this. Now, Laurent G. Consciousness, Shalom Ma, asked Jonathan, has he been to Egypt? Here goes Jonathan response. Watch this. We played this at the debate. I know we destroyed them. At the debate, he says, no, my plans are to learn the language before taking a trip to Kemet. So I saw Amhotep is right. He is absolutely right. The brother said he want to learn a language. At the debate, he said, I took it out of context. I want to learn it more. It's the same thing. The brother said, you don't know enough to go there. He says, my trip will be possible, possibly be like five or six days, two weeks tops. I want to walk around with high knowledge, etc." Not know on educational vocation, Laurent, but I will go. All right? So now he's telling you that he really doesn't know the metal netter, but everybody applauded after we showed him and he went down to his breakdowns of metal netter. Even his person that was there, I saw Amotem, did not agree with him, right? 
So the Hebrew Israelites use an interpretation from many of scholars. We use um, uh, we use Faulkner, we use Budge, um, uh, we use, uh, we use a lot of different sources. But some of the sources we use at the debate was Budge, and they hammered us for using Budge, right? Israelites are always victorious. This is too easy. But wait till I get to polite. Everyone loved this. This is Jonathan Owens. When we was using buds at the debate in the, in, in the year before, they were hammering us. You're using the Europeans. You got to go to the black scholars. Everyone loves discrediting Bud's work. This is January 2nd. This is last month. They didn't, they didn't change their minds. They only changed their minds for the debate when Hebrew Israelites were using it. Everyone loved discrediting Bud's work, myself included. But after researching Bud, I find his conflicts with German school of Egyptology were the main reason why he was discredited. He said because he had conflict with the Germans, that's why he was discredited. Bud busted German Egyptologists out for saying Metal Nature was a Semitic language. Here was a quote from Bud in reply to the German school claim. The ancient Egyptians were Africans, and they spoke an African language, and the modern people of Eastern Sudan are Africans, and they speak the African language, and there's a consequence, there, and there's a consequence much in modern native Sudanese literature, which will help the student of ancient Egypt in his work, E.A. Wallace Budge. But he doesn't quote Budge in his book, Metal Netta, right? Where he says he used Hebrew. So, so Budge is contradicting himself, but they're bigging up Budge. Now listen to Asar Amhotep, Mr. Africa, oh Africa. Asar Amhotep said, ain't nothing wrong with Budge. He knew what was up with Africa. But remember, he was being funded by the British Museum. They couldn't just come out and say everything was African about Egypt. They had to hold on to some racism and doing some cross comparison. Many of Budge's vocalizations are actually what you find in Af Africa. Maybe he was more informed than led to believe. So you're giving credence to the people that we used at the debate that you said was Europeans misinterpreting Metal Netta. It's very interesting. They are done. This is why they scram. This is why you see video popping up. They're trying to cover up what happened at the debate. This is why you're going to see a lot of snippets and clips out of the debate when you order it. You're going to see a lot of things missing out, like polite handing around the basket like he does in every debate. Oh, we need more money for more time. I'm not going there. Now, let's make it to APEP claims against me. Now everybody, oh, now I see, don't even respond. Somebody told me, he killed you on this one. There ain't no comeback from this. It's, it's no comeback if you're ignorant. Now, according to the Hebrews, he said Nasi, King, Kafri is a Hebrew Israelite, right? Let's skip Gabar. Gabar, Gabar says the Hexos are Hebrew Israelites. Gabar is somewhat accurate. Hebrew Israelites were a part of the Hexos. They weren't the entire Hexos. So let's get that out of there. And, uh, you know, I spoke to him about it, so we, we're correct. And guess what? If he have anything to bring to the table, like perfect example with the King James stuff, I never read the information that my brother Donnie Allen presented. So when he presented, I didn't have no rebuttal for some of that stuff, and I don't even care to look into it. I'll take my brother's word. You understand what I'm saying? But if it was a debate or a hatred, I never had hatred because these are my brothers. I rode in there with them. We, 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 we stayed up late nights. These are my brothers, man. We are warriors, and we love each other, man. This is what Israel is about. This is what Israel is about. It's about loving each other and coming together. And did we have a common enemy? Yes, we did. Some Israelites is on the other side, and that's okay because God is not using you in the sifting out process. It's about building your nation. Nasi, Joseph is meant to hotel. That's what he used to give me. Nasi, Moses is Amin Mises, Manepatah. Nasi, Hetzeset is Queen of Sheba, took Moses the first, the second, and the third. Gabar Ramsey is a Hebrew Israelite. Now, I can't speak on Gabar. Gabar can handle his own. And you best believe my man Hashar is coming for your throat on them stuff you said because a lot of that stuff you said was false too. See, the thing is, you're not reading these books fully because this stuff is new to you, man. I am your master teacher, brother. You have studied more about Egyptology than ever. You actually started learning metal nether because of us. Because of us, polite. I'm gonna show you you didn't know metal nature. You don't even know you don't even know the basic tenets of Egyptology, 
or kinetic science. You know what? I expected more from you at the debate. I expected you to come out and break down the um, um, hieroglyphs. I thought you was going to break down. You did nothing but show discord that Hebrews have. And you showed the trip, you brought out a coffin, talking about where the Hebrew dead bodies, when Divine Prospect already did a video on that. But it ain't a video because it didn't get paid on, played on Sign of the Channel. See, that's what you think. Everybody only watched Sign of the TV. Shout out to the elder. But I'm telling you, there's too much control by APEP in that community. So let's go to the next thing. All right. Here it goes. It's called the Hebrews extirpation. Extirpation, right? They tried to destroy us. In turn, they killed themselves. It polite, adamant. I just want you to feel the energy is coming to force, right? I want to show you this. Joseph was meant to hotel. This is what he said, right? But when you look at small, the small dynasty, and you look at Rome and El Dapa, these areas, you look at, you see numerous amount of Shemitic people. And Shemitic people that actually... Look at his face. He's a warrior. And the utensils, and just fed us out of nowhere. How do you react? El Dapa. We have to have El Dapa in the home. That's the Delta. That's the Delta. He said, Yosef or Joseph, Moses' brother, was either a mental hotel. And we don't do this in Kemet. We don't say, uh, Ramses was probably this one or he was probably that one. This tells you they don't even know what the hell they talk about. How could you boldly stand up there before people telling them and teaching them about your culture and say that you think the people that you are identifying with is either this one or that one. So not only don't we have your bodies, but we have to now pick between your speculations which one exists. But he said Moses, I mean Joseph, might just be mental hotel. Joseph is Hebrew. And he also mentioned the 12th dynasty being filled with Asiatic to Hebrews. All right. Now, interesting enough, he took a video that I did two years ago, right? And I said, the question the aunt asked me is, who is Joseph? I said, either uh, Mentu Hotep or some other name he used, right? Um, so Mentu Hotep. So he asked me, so he uses that to say that I don't know what I'm talking about or I have variations in my understanding. And I said, more than likely, that means I was assuming something or I was doing research on the something. And one thing you learn about ancient um, um, chronology, ancient names, these names are epithets. They're not names like John. Or, or, or Kim or, or Ken. These are titles. So what you do is triangulate the titles in order to match them up. Perfect example. In uh, the Hebrew scriptures, you have the word Kenok, right? Then you have a word Tehuti or Jehuti, right? Jehuti was the one who educated the masses, right? He told them about the stars, the systems, how to count, the solar, the, 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 the um, rotation of the sun and all of these things that was imperative for us to learn how to make calendars and information and us to make civilizations and society. This was the Houthi job. He educated the masses. Then in the Hebrew, you have a word or a man called Kanuk. Kanuk is an epithet. Kanuk means to educate or devotion. He was devoted in educating the people. He died at what age? At 365. That correlates with what? The solar cycle. They're telling you the same story, so you have to be able to triangulate between or through the different information and match people up with one another. See, Polite doesn't know this stuff, but he should because he's a mason, and they teach you some masonry. They teach you that Joseph of the Enoch is Tehuti. They teach you that. That's one of your basic teachings. But he's going to play games because he said that I didn't know exactly, or we don't do the variances, where he knows that that's not true. But do I believe that mental health temp is Joseph? No, my variation or my understanding slightly differs now because as a man, I grow throughout the times. See, that's another thing that's disingenuous about polite. Anybody that's a scholar know the thing you believe a year ago, two years ago, such and such, you start to evolve, either you add on to it or you remove it from your growth process because it's a hindrance to you. But he knows that. And I want to show you something. Let's go by polite. He's trying to say that I'm not honest. I shouldn't stand before the people because I teach stuff that I don't believe or things that don't make sense or I'm not clear about. Let's go by his standard. 
The Tomb of Osiris by Brother Polite. Don't call him Polite no more. There's nothing polite about the brother. The brother's Apep, the serpent. Now, here's goes video where he's going against Hebrew Perry. And what I'm going to show you is how Hebrew Perry actually beat Polite. Osiris. They found the man that the people revered as God. Now you may not believe in his story, but what I'm saying is the people that wrote about his story, that identified him as God, we found his body, which is more than what we can say for Jesus. Now, I, I'm going to stop it right there because I want you to look at Hebrew Perry's face. Hebrew Perry might be one of the smartest people in the conscious community because he's not believing this crap that Polite said. He said, they found the body of Osiris. He, he brought the energy into him. See, because he, he, because look at him, look at his face. He's bringing that energy. He's bringing that fire because he wants you to believe in what he's saying. But Hebrew Perry, it may not be the, the, the wisest man on the planet, but he knows this brother is talking garbage. More than what we can say for Moses, more than we can say for Abraham, I'm saying the Egyptian gods have been found. If you watch Maury's show, you are not the father. He went into ancient Egypt. Did the brother just reference Maury Povich? Is this his reference? You are not the father? So this is the scholar that everybody's basing their information off of? Let's continue. It gets, it gets better, man. This is exciting. Grab some popcorn. Or, or just allow this to be what you watch tonight and you enjoy yourself and laugh because this is going to be hilarious. He will Perry destroys this dude. And they found Osiris Casket. And the people said Osiris. They ain't never find no Osiris They found Osiris Casket. So, so he does right. He tells them what he references, and he said, "Type it in and Google it." He must have either been on some new government drink or something that, because he didn't watch the show. Obviously, we got the show right here. Let's show you what it did. Because initially, he said they found a body, right? Well, you want to play that back? You found a body. Well, he was probably so smart. He said, "Hey, find that crap." But Lee, look, he will, he will probably know how to rebuttal. Did he have any proof? Did he have a PowerPoint presentation? Nope. He knew that Ted I was a bunch of garbage. What you could have did at the debate, but you didn't. Here goes the video. Now, earlier this evening, we found a mummy. A mummy that Dr. Hawass thinks is one of the oldest ever to be found in its own resting place. And then, Susie and Zahi slid down a 19-inch passageway 60 feet into the Queen. All right. Now, he quoted Mari, but he should have quoted Zahi Hawass, which is the Egyptologist. He said they found a corpse, right? He found a mummy, but watch what Zahi Hawass states. This pyramid, and that's where they found what they believe to be an unfinished tomb. So we're a hundred feet down now. What is this? Susie, this is the tomb of Osiris. The god of the underworld. This once extravagant mausoleum, a moat with four pillars engraved with hieroglyphics constructed thousands of years ago, was intended to be a symbolic shrine for the keeper of the afterlife. If you will look down here, I will show you what is here. Look, there is the second part of the sarcophagus goes down, I think about uh, one feet down. And up, you see what we did. The lid is up. You want to see the... All right. When she goes in, when she goes in with Zahia Was, they found an empty tomb that was built to be a what? A symbolic shrine to Asar. Now, I could be a fool and say polite is not educated, I could be a fool to say that he shouldn't teach the masses because he said something that isn't true at all. But he knew it wasn't true. He knew it wasn't true. But he said it because he knew that you were too ignorant to look it up. See, there's a difference. Hebrew Israelites, we don't fall for anything. You have to show us something. We have to believe in something. We have to feel it spiritually for us to embody it and take it because we want to know 
what is it saying? What is it feeling? How does it feel to you? You know what I mean? They can show you all of these bodies and all this stuff, whatever they're trying to do. But it has to be right to us. There has to be a right energy. We talking about, we ain't talking about show us the body. We're talking about show us where we can see the references. Show us where we can understand how this works. This is what we do. This brother Divine Prospect, me, we do a lot of work and research. Are we right all the time? No. But polite is wrong most of the time. I want to go and show you some more stuff because Hebrew Perry just busted him out right there and showed him he got him on that. Hebrew Perry got him. Hebrew Perry wasn't the most articulate individual, but he told this brother that's bull crap. All right, Osiris in Christ is the same. This is what polite tells you. Oh, he said Jesus is the most talk about person in the world. I most, I, written, about, most written about. That's inaccurate. That's, that's, that's inaccurate to this time. It's perfect. And that's inaccurate. I'm gonna tell you what's the most perfect. written about. What's the most written about in the world? Ancient Egypt. There's more books on ancient Egypt. Now he prepared and said the most written about person was Christ. <laughs> but life says no, ancient I'm Egypt. Up, but it still is not gonna make sense. But he prepared not even really paying attention to him, but he's killing him. Were written, I said anything was the most written of person. Single with I'm going to prove my point. The most cold. Could you let me finish, my brother? Can okay, you let me finish? Now, if it stands to reason that Egypt is the most written about amongst all other subject matters, then what does Egypt talk about? Then Egypt is going to take you to Hughes, which is what they call God, and the Greek, which is Horus, right? Which will be their Christ, which in Egypt they call Christ Karas. All right, now, that's a whole mouthful. Now he said, he said that if you talk about, let's, let's, let's listen now, let's think about this. He said, the most talked about thing is Egypt, but Perry said place. He's equating it to saying the most, he, like, that's like saying George Washington, right? Let's use George Washington. He said George Washington, or whatever. He's saying because people claim that America is the most talked about place, that George Washington is mentioned more than this, which makes no sense. Hebrew Perry is pissed off. He's about to walk off because he knows this is ignorance. It doesn't make no sense whatsoever. But then he goes into the word heos, huyos, and says it means God. The Greek word means God. So now he talks about huyos as being the Greek word for God. And he says Christ and Horus is the same. Hmm? Osiris. I'm going to edit it. Right. He says Osiris and Christ is the same. But he's playing on words. He's playing on words because the Hebrews believe in the Hamashiach. Mashiach. I'm going to show you the difference. But he says, Huyos means God. Now all you got to do is slow down polite stuff. We didn't get far. I was looking for one thing. And we found tons of things. And this is so simple. It's like only thing you have to do is listen, but people don't listen. They just in awe about the words he's using. Here go the word. We're looking at the Bible Hub Strong Concordance. The word huios means a son. All right? A son. A child of. Now, if you're looking for the Greek word for God, we see over here, it's Theos. But he's lying to Perry because he thinks Perry doesn't know anything, but Perry represents a smarter group of the conscious community because he knew that was bullcrap too, but most of the people in the conscious community is not going to check them. So he said Karas, the word Christ derives from Karas, but he's playing on words because he's trying to make you think that Yahweh who they call the Mashiach, is the same word as Karas, which it isn't. Here go a book by Gerald Massey, Ancient Egypt, The Light to the World, right? We look at the original word and how it goes about Karas. Here you go, the Qu, the R, the Z, and the T, right? And I'm going to show you more of reading how hieroglyphs is not hard. Don't let these boys fool you. 
It's just certain things that you have to build up your vocabulary, and there's a lot of different. There's the uh, uh, demotic, there's hieratic, there's the uh, um, um, the, the priest metonetta. There's things that's different that you got to figure they, out. They 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 use the computer. They're not. So this is the thing. When they brought out the hieroglyphs, part of their argument was that we can't ask them to read hieroglyphs. Wasn't it? It's one of the things they asked. Now here you go. Crest. Whence has to embalm, to bandage, to not, to make a mummy, karast. Champollion's grammar. The word karast, so now he's using Champollion, right? But like here is using Champollion, which Champollion is related to who? Napoleon. The same one who blew off the Sphinx nose. So when he's using this whole karast, which comes from the Coptic, which are Christian Egyptians anyway, they relate the karas from the into the Greek word Christ. When we look at the Hebrew word Mashiach, it has nothing to do with it because it comes from the word of anointment, from anointing. So the word karas here, the word karas denotes embalming of a mummy. The caress as the mummy was made in the process of preparation by purifying, anointing, and embalming. So now, what is our what is the biblical text and what does Yahweh she have to do with embalming? Absolutely nothing. But he'll deceive you. Let us continue to go. This is going to get better and better. He said, right, they found the body of Osiris. This is what he tells everybody. They found the body of Osiris. He's arguing with the man. And then he tells them that Christ or, 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 or Yahweh Shah is the same thing as Osiris and Horus. Let's see what he say here. The Immaculate Conception. Many people think that we should associate the Immaculate Conception of the Christians' theology with ancient Egyptians' theology. And it's not the same. The Horus or an Isis or a Set, that's mythos. Woo! So he just said to Hebrew Perry, because Hebrew Perry is killing him. He's killing him. So he just told Hebrew Perry that Osiris' body was found, but now he's telling you in this text, he said not only that Osiris and Horus are myth, but he's telling you that Horus and Osiris in the, in the, in the, in the Yahweh Shah story is not the same thing. This is what APEP does. And I'm telling you, there's tons of stuff where this comes from. We can go with all his books contradict one another. All his books. And he think I'm playing with him. You picked the wrong one to play with, brother. And I'm telling you because all I can do, we can sit here and go through all your videos and show how you contradict. We have tons of videos. And I'm telling you, polite, leave it alone or we can continue this thing back and forth. You're making yourself look foolish. Now, here goes polite. He said... Listen to what he says, man. And this is how I knew initially this man knew nothing about Egyptology. And I pulled it out at the SETI debate. We are the master teachers. They are chasing us. One thing, let me show you one thing I saw Amhotep said when we was on the phone. And I want to quote him exactly. And if I'm wrong, I saw Amhotep tell me if I'm wrong. But he said that at the debate we were disingenuous because we pulled out information we know they never seen before and, then, and, he, and we knew that it would take them weeks to interpret it and look over the text. Oh, that was our point. Our point was to show you you had no idea what you're teaching. This is why you're getting rebuttal so late. I said at the debate that you'll never see metal netta side by side, the word medu and netta side by side. Also, Amhotep, two weeks, two and a half weeks to three weeks later, points out that there is metal netta side by side. Now, I take that, brother. Congratulations. He showed that, but that was not one of my claims. That was something I was saying that I said at the debate, but he showed it. So as a man, I say, you know what? You did find the word metal netta in there. And he said, another claim down the toilet, more is coming. What does that mean? They still researching the information. That's called a body bag. Anytime you stun your opponent where they can't defend themselves and they have to go back to slandering and, and, and using stuff that has nothing to do with Kemet on trial, then they are finished. You have see to, to the most to the world, you ask them, oh Kemet wanted to make why? Because polite brought out the casket and he went to Egypt. Woo! It don't have nothing to do with Kemet on trial. 
This plan, we came to give the information. It was going to be, matter of fact, and, and, and Divine will tell you, it was me and Hashar and Daniela versus Zion Lex and a Divine Prospect. We were competing against each other to see who's going to tear them up the most. And we really didn't get to hear Divine presentation because Divine has some stuff. But Zion Lex got some stuff that's going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind. And this is what you're going to see April 5th. We're going to have more and more stuff. See, this is just, I'm, we're just playing around with this information. They are still trying to refute us. You know what? And then Uncle Cake said, you know what? That's stupid. What I look like answering about a cannibal hymn. Well, if it's a cannibal hymn, don't you think that that implies that some cannibalism was going on? So tell the people why it doesn't make sense. He said, I would be a fool to refute the cannibal hymn or try to translate it and show you. But guess what? Polite later comes on and tries to interpret the cannibal hymn and tell you it's breastfeeding. And you buy it. Because anything to get you away from eating people and, 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 and penises or whatever, you take anything, anything anybody tell you, oh, it's kundalini energy, oh, it's, it's, the, 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 it's the prostate gland. You buy it because you're struggling. This is why you're patching up this debate so much because one of the things that said the Israelites can't win them all. That was what they were trying to prove. You can't stop us. We can't be stopped. Look when I call into the couch when Polite's there. Polite said, don't answer, Sarnetta. We got it on tape. When I call in, I finally get in. He said, I got to go. When Zion Lex said, let me sit on the couch with you. Ah, you on punishment. He's been ducking us for the longest, and he ducked us at the debate. He went in and did some foolishness and left out and took y'all money. In that video, Arthur Keck said, I got, we had, the nuclear weapons was about to come out. Well, don't y'all want to see the nuclear weapons? I want to see him. I want to see the bombs they were going to bring. Oh, we got a video of Nazi saying the New Testament people are demons. Bring it out. Where did you dig that video up from? I want to know. Because do I believe that? No, I don't. All the brothers I rock with, most of the brothers I rock with, Hashar, Priest Daniela, Nazir Lee, Divine Prospect, all of these brothers believe in the Hamashiach. Do I separate myself from the brothers? No, these are the only brothers I rock with. So even so, so whatever you think you have, put it out. Let the people bring all the bombs. Reggie, oh, I'm going to dismantle your authority. I'm going to tear you up. He put up a list of where we were from and what congregations we were from, and they're wrong. They're wrong. You from IOG, Divine? Divine not from IOG. Shammai is not from uh, 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 Josiah, Josiah 4, Rabbi 4. Hey, hey, who, who, who on this list that you have divine prospect? That's not his name. You know what I'm saying? You put people, you put people nicknames up there like that's an official letter. The, the letter may be an official, but the chart ain't. But there's a lot of crafty stuff, and we're going to bomb that too. I'm going to show you these people are being manipulative. They're snakes, and they know they felt the wrath. I know there's, there's brothers that's in the comedic community that will be there April 5th to show you how these brothers are dishonorable, and they didn't even come really to defend the information. Why didn't they have real Egyptologists defending it? Why didn't they have real comedic people that would have stood there and banged with the Hebrews? Here, we're going to play this. Polite. He doesn't understand anything about comedic history or the works, but he's going to, he's going to put that oomph in there and make you believe, like a pastor. Let, let me ask you a question. That's something else to be put on the book. Let me ask you a question, brother. If, 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 your, if your father came to you mm -hmm. and said, damn son, I wish I avoided you, how would you feel about your pops? Is this a question? What if he said, I wasn't trying to have you with the column bust, and that's how the hell you got me. Okay, so if God said that to me. If God said, damn, I wish I didn't make your ass. Yeah, I went. So this is what I'm saying. I'm a different generational group. If you give me a God, I want to know that when my God makes something, he's proud of what he created. Because if my God turned around and said, damn, I fucked up when I made you, then that means don't send me to hell. Don't send me to heaven. You you, that's what God said to me. Well, we go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 6. Yeah, it says, and it repented the Lord. And when you go to Hebrew, it can be synonymous with he or she. So it can mean he or she repented. They put the word it there in English. It says it repented he the Lord. No, it meant the situation that he was looking down. Let me finish the verse. Listen. No, no. Wait, now wait, you wait, created. Wait, let me finish. No, wait, what is what? I'm not so, What the 
what you say, you know, okay, okay, let's do finish. It says, it repented the Lord that he made man. And the word they use for repent mm -hmm. is the word nakam. Nakam means to regret. So it says, he or she regretted that he made man. This is in Genesis 6, verse 6. Now, if God, you converted me to your doctrine, and this is in the Torah or the Tanakh, if you converted me to the doctrine, and you converted me to this God, and I read the scripture, and the scripture says that God regretted or repented that he even made you in the first place, that's God saying the condom bucks. I didn't mean to make you. So why are you converting me to a God that wish he never made me? In ancient Egypt, hold up, in ancient, hold on, in ancient Egypt, our God never, in ancient Egypt, our God never said, I apologize for making you. I apologize for creating you. God don't have no damn regrets. <sighs> Well, there's a lot to know that the Most High said he's not a man that repents. There is rules and regulations to read in the scriptures. It's called anthropomorphism, which polites know about. It is not to show that God regretted making man. It's to make man empathize and have a feeling have a feeling of empathy inside of himself and feel that he is remorseful for the things that he has done is difficult. So it's to create a feeling of emotion inside of the man. Polite knows that. But he goes on to say that the Egyptian gods never repented that they made man. Well, clearly he's not reading his text. Let us go. This is from the book of the Celestial Cow. Here's the story of Ra, the God who self-begotten and self-created after he had assumed sovereignty over man, woman, gods, things, and one God. Now men, women were speaking words of complaint, saying, Behold, his majesty, life, strength, and health to him hath grown old, his bones have become like silver, and his members have turned into gold, and his hair like a uh, real lapis lazuli. His majesty heard the words of the complaints of men were uttering. So the majesty, God heard the complaints of man. And his majesty, life, strength, health to him, said unto those who were in his train, Cry out and bring to me my eye, and Shu, and Tefnu, and Geb, and Nu, and the father gods, and the mother gods who were with me. Even when I was in Nu, side by side with my God Nu, let there be brought along with my eye his ministers. Right? And let them be led to me hither secretly, so that men and women may not perceive their coming hither, and may not therefore take to flight with their hearts. And it goes on later on and says, And the Master of Rod said, Behold, they have betaken themselves to fight into the mountains of taking the flight into the mountains of the land. For their hearts are afraid because of the words which they have uttered. Now they know now the people are getting scared. Alright? Then the goddess said, Thou hast made me to live, for when I gained mastery over men and women, it was sweet to my heart. And the majesty of Ra said, I myself will be master over them, their king, and I will destroy them. So now Ra was saying when he gets total control over man, he's going to destroy them? I too said the same thing. There's so many texts. And the majesty of Ra spoke unto this goodness, saying, I am smitten with pain of the fire of sickness was coming to me in his pain. So he's saying that he's grieving. He's hurting. Boy, this is just too easy. And the Master of Ross said, I live, I, I live, but my heart has become exceedingly weary with existence with them. But I'm going to read this and tell you this has something to do with uh, uh, getting your tummy tuck. He's going to turn it into a scientific tummy tuck, right? But y'all not fools no longer. All right. Now, here goes a few. Well, now, and I want you to hear, he breaks this down so eloquently. I want y'all to hear this because, oh, sorry, they got fireworks and bombs going off. Like, yo, man, yo, Polite is going in. APEP is killing them. So now, we played this at the debate. So, there was a man that was kicked out of Egypt, right? Okay. to the next one. So right now, Moses is also a Hebrew named Amin Messes. Guess what? If Moses is a Hebrew, right, which he is, and his name is Amin Messes, which y'all don't know, y'all don't go into Egyptian genealogy, y'all only go in there when it fits your, your agendas. 
If Amin Messis is a Hebrew, then Marion Fatah, his father, has to be a Hebrew. What did this mean? That so far, we just took the information we got now. If the Hebrews were in slavery, right? Because remember, Moses was living in Egypt while his people living in, held in exile in Egypt. If Moses was Amin Messis and his father was Marion Fatah, and Ramses II is a Hebrew, and his father, King Seti, is a Hebrew because you are who your father is according to the Hebrew Israelite doctrine. What did this mean that when the Hebrews were enslaved, y'all say that y'all was in slavery in Egypt. What did this mean that the, if the Hebrews were enslaved in Egypt, that it would have had to have been Hebrews that enslaved Hebrews? Ooh. Now look at this man's face. I want you to look at his face. Look at his face. Look at his face. This brother is serious. Now he said, listen to what he said. Now I want to show you how he is destroying his own people. Now everybody, now see, where did you get Amon Mises and Meshi is Moses? Well, I was studying with a brother called Ngozi of the Amon Raswa. And in that research, we came across that information. So did we know that Meshi was Amon Mises? Yes, we did. Now, listen to what the brother said. He said that, let me, let me look right now, if Moses is Amimesis and his father is Manet Patah, Manet Patah, wouldn't that make his father a Hebrew? Right after this explosion happens on sound of the TV, boom, it blows up. I'm dead serious. Look at my face. Listen to what he said. You have to examine what this man says. He said, if Moses is Amon Mises and Amon Mises' father was Manet Patah, wouldn't that make the man who collected the penises, Moses' father, a Hebrew? Say it to yourself. Now, let me tell you, it doesn't take scholarship to be refute this information, to debunk this dumbness. Anybody who ever, if let's say you never read the Bible, most of you seen the Prince of Egypt. So one thing you know about the Prince of Egypt, my baby girl can refute this ignorance. Because if Amon Mises is Moses, then his father who was the Pharaoh according to the biblical text wouldn't be his biological father it would be the one of the daughter who drew him out the water and took him into his household but if you are a fool and don't know nothing you're eating this up and you got fireworks coming after this which is ignorant all the people see you don't have to read books just watch the Prince of Egypt do a little Disney and you can refute this fool this is what I can't stand. I can't, I want the conscious community to step their game up. He makes a lot of ignorant claims like this. So if Amin Mises was Moses, that doesn't make Manepatah his biological father. It makes us a father that adopted him or drew him from the water. Now, I want you to, this video says, it, it, he goes to the next slide, which he's just pulling up slides to try to dis, 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 dismantle me. He, he, he got something after me. He's against me. And the brother hates me. But the brother's going and getting too big for his britches. This is it for him. Watch him collapse. You've seen the videos, money game, money team. Now he's defending it on Sinai, the calling everybody else out. He's the God of the Israelites. Y'all support that? Y'all rock with that? He the God of the Israelites? They are Trinity? I don't do blasphemy well, brothers. And new brothers who stand by that? Peace unto you. God has made a decision. It said, who is on the Lord's side? Stand with him. That's blasphemy. Let's see what side you want. In this video, he says, is Khafre another Hebrew king or evil king? He says, watch what he says. Now, watch how he plays on words because in the audio is not clear, but he's going to say something to make you think or interject a voice impression inside of your mind that I'm actually saying something that I'm not. Now, watch this. 
Ezra is a Hebrew. So let's play it just to make sure I'm not lying on the brother. They're going to be commanded. You see the distortion? So now we got Kafra is another Hebrew king. Now, the brother took that distortion and said, I said another Hebrew king. Now, ask yourself, if you're not the smartest person in the world, why at the last debate with the second debate would I spend three slides bashing um, Khufu and Kafra? For their wickedness, for they selling their daughters and prostitutions in the temple. Why would I bash him if I said he was a Hebrew king? Because the brother is really playing on the word that I actually said, an evil king. Now let's play it back and keep evil king in mind. So now that it's clear that I said evil king, is another Hebrew king. Now we see it's clear that I said evil king. First he distorted in the initial part so it can pitch it up to make it make a H noise, but really he knows I'm saying evil king. You don't hear the brew, you don't hear none of that. The brother's playing. So now this attack that he did is done. This attack that he did is done. The Mitchell Hotel was already explained. Now let's go to the last claim he has. And he had hours of ranting. I can't cover everything, but I'm covering most of the stuff. This brother is easy to destroy. And I dare him anytime he wants to sit on the couch with me face to face. Sit on the couch with Divine. Sit on the couch with Zion Lex. Sit on the couch with Zion. Zion's in New York. Sit on the couch with Hashem. He won't. He took your money, bounced out, and left. He didn't give you the full debate. We had Black Lotus Civilization. We had Ebo, brother from the Ebo tribe. We had the brother, brother, other brothers from the country, country, continent coming and defending the claims that we were making. That would have been a beautiful debate, but they didn't want that. They didn't want that. So now Queen Hatshepsut as Queen of Sheba, right? Now, let's go back to this one. I mean, this brother's so deep, so deep, man. It gets better. Now we're going to go over here to Hatshep Sut. Because even though at the debate, and you need to get this camera on me right now. And I'm going to play it for those who ain't seen the debate. At the debate, they said, Nazi said that Hatshep Sut is one of the world's first ducks. Disrespectful. He said, Hatshepsut is one of the world's first dykes. So I want to jog his memory, because according to him, Hatshepsut is Hebrew. And I dare y'all to go against what I'm teaching, because I ain't teach yet. I'm they teaching. I'm accepting everything they teach. He dared us to go against his teacher. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
says now the biblical story starts making more sense once you stop lying about the chronological order. Now, he said, I quoted and said that Queen of Sheba, the first dyke, is a Hebrew. So that would make the first dyke of ancient Egypt a Hebrew. So he said, because I used it as Queen of Sheba, I crossed out. Now listen to what he said. I want you to listen carefully. Remember I told you how to do it. Polite, just slow stuff down. He says, Queen of Sheba, the first dyke, is a Hebrew, according to Nasi. I said that Hashepsut was the queen of Sheba. How do you make that a Hebrew? So, oh, because Solomon slept with her, that makes her Hebrew? So if I sleep with a Mexican, does that make a Mexican African-American? You see the world games he's playing? You see how he's playing with your mind? But he says, oh, our divine mother, the divine queen. But what is he doing? He's using a diversion tactic. Because he still hasn't answered why Hatshepsut dressed like a man. And if you go into the Egyptian uh, Kebra Nagas, it shows that Hatshepsut didn't even like Solomon sexually. And that's a long story, so you, so you get into it. So the stuff that I'm saying, I'm not changing, I stand by that. And if I see something to change, change, then I change it. But that ignorance is not going to make me change my stand. I never said Queen of Sheba was a Hebrew. She is the Queen of Sheba. Queen of Sheba is a Hebrew according to Nasi. No, dummy, she's the Queen of Sheba. Just slow down. Slow down. But why isn't he asking her? Why isn't anybody telling the story of Hatshepsut? Because they don't want you to know the story of Hatshepsut. Because Nasi and the rest of the Israelites will be right about everything they're saying. So all of these brothers are saying that he disrespected our queen. He disrespected her. So was, well, yeah, he disrespected her. You don't understand the culture. But they never go into it. I'm going to go into it for you. The life of Hatshepsut. Now, the reason why they don't want you to see this or know about her, because that would prove the Hebrew Israelites right on everything they are completely saying in that debate. Now, Hatshepsut, she was the eldest daughter of Tutmosis the I and the queen of Atmosis, the first king and queen of the Thutmose clan in the 18th dynasty. Tutmosis the I and Atmos are known to have had only one other child, a daughter, Akbet Neferu who died in infancy. Now remember, at the debate, I showed that the, um, the Egyptians had uh, um, low birth rates, high mortality rates amongst the infants. Um, even Polite said when he went to Egypt, he went into one of the mounds that was an ancient hospital for the, uh, the young children so they can survive and um, 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 live through their um, infancy. Now, why he don't tell the story is because Akbet Neferu died in infancy. Now this is common. Once you read all the pharaohs, their, their children are dying off. Now, what happened to the Kudalini energy? What happened to the herbs? What happened to the comedic uh, uh, remedies that they had? They were dying off. They were a plague family. But let's go on. That's not it. Tutmos I also married Mutnofret, possibly a daughter of Akbos I, right? And produced several half-brothers and sisters. Hatshepsut says, half brothers and sisters, Wajamos, Aminos, Tutmos II, second, second, and possibly Ramos through that union. Both Wajamos and Aminos were prepared to succeed their father, but neither lived beyond adolescence. So she was almost the only surviving child. But this is common in Egyptian practices. This is what they're teaching you. They're teaching you about a dying civilization. A civilization that created um, 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 architects that were beyond um, measures that they believed that they created, but they couldn't even save their own souls from dying. My point and my stance at the debate stands and it will not be removed. Read about all the pharaohs. Read about all their children, and you'll see similar stories. This is why he said he disrespected our queen, but don't tell you about the queen. They're not going to teach you anything. You will learn more about Egyptology listening to me and divine prospect. 
These are the things you have to listen to. Now, in childhood, Hatcher said is believed to have been the favorite by the Temple of Karnak over her two brothers by her father, a view promoted by her own propaganda. Hatcher said apparently had a close relationship with both parents and later produced, um, produced a propaganda story in which the father took most the first, supposedly named her as a direct heir. Hatcher said dressed like a man and wore a false beard to prove that she could be a pharaoh and rule Egypt in her own rights. Who happened to the, 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 the black woman is God? So you're telling me the, the queen mother had to dress up like a male in order for her to be accepted as a ruler? That's why they're not touching it. Because all the stuff that they was teaching is false. It's false. They haven't touched it yet. Have you heard anybody tell a story about Hatchup said and explain why Nazi was wrong? No, Polite tried to go in it by saying something stupid. But he's wrong. Now, here go Maxim of Patahotep, right? The 21st, when you prosper and found you a house and love your wife with a door, fill her belly, clothe her back, ointment soothes her body, gladden her heart as long as you live. She is a fertile field for her Lord. Do not contend with her in court. Keep her from power. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. She is a fertile field for her Lord. Who's her Lord? Who's her master? It is the male. Whoa. Do not contend with, it says, do not contend with the court. Don't go back and forth with her. Keep her from power. Restrain her. Her eyes is a storm when she gazes. Thus will you make her stay in your house. So now, now thus you will make her stay in your house. Now, if you look at the depictions of, of the ancient uh, Semites or the Easterners, when you look at the Easterners, when you see the man, the husband, and the wife together, they're the same complexion. But when you look at the ancient Egyptians, the husband is darker than the wife, showing that, what, she stayed indoors more. So they don't want to tell a story because it's going to sound almost like Hebrewism, which they perceive to be Hebrewism, or they try to make us look like, oh, we just these tyrants and stuff like that. But it's obvious. Hashem said dress like a man to keep herself in power. And that's the, in the story of Queen of Sheba, the same thing. She could not be touched by a male. Once she was touched by a male, she lost her throne. Stories don't change. But Polite is a master of deception. All right. Manepatah was Moses' father who cut the penises off. He got a beautiful picture of me here. I look, I look awesome, you know? Got the, my gold is flickering. It look like I'm just putting my hand in. I'm shooting fire out of my hand. It's excellent. But in this, he breaks it down like, oh, Manapatar. So let, let's listen to what he say. Because he's going to say the same thing. Now I already exposed him. Now, Nazi did this at the debate. Nazi says that Pharaoh Merapatar, because this is a screenshot of the debate. This is him. In the 1300 BC, the Egyptian pharaoh Merenfetal had inscribed on the walls of the Temple of Karnak the story of the amputations of over 13,000 phalli of his enemies. So he says that Merenfetal had on his temple the image of 13,000 phalluses. And of course he made this a negative thing because it's phalluses, right? So now here's the question. If Merenfetal had 13,000 images of phalluses on his wall. And his son is Amen Messes, who you say is Moses. Then Moses' father, Marin had 13,000 phalluses on the wall. So who are you condemning? Are you condemning Egyptians or are you condemning Hebrews? But you hear Sinai in the background. Damn! Sinai don't know what's going on. He's just, he's just rolling with the punches. He's just, you know, he don't understand the information. I don't respect him too. That's my other. He, he, he does what he do. He promotes uh, debates and, and makes money from that and, and his videos. I don't expect him to know. I expect this brother to know better than that. And he says because they're foul eyes, right? They're foul eyes. Uh, I'm, I'm crazy. No, because they were decapitating them. Did they ever explain why they decapitated the penises? Why they decapitated the right hand? Um, let me tell you. They decapitated the right hand because if you were circumcised, they wouldn't decapitate. They wouldn't remove your penis because your penis was already devoted to another deity. So they took your might, which was considered to be your right hand. Just simple stuff these brothers could have said and answered. They just couldn't do it because they don't know what they're teaching. Now, 
Imagine a society where it is a normal practice of the nasup to cut off penises, cut off hands, and boil people in pots. See, the, see the, my attack that I gave on February 8th was almost unstoppable. The reason why, because I didn't go into a lot of interpretations. I just showed the pictures of the images of people being boiled in pots, people uh, heads being cut off and drained, uh, the ark leaving the body of a decapitated um, Easterner representing the life of the soul going to the sacrifice. I showed you all of this. This is why it's hard to refute my information. Only how you can refute my information is if Amin Ra squad go help ISIS blow down the pyramids and every Egyptian artifact in the world, then come back and say I was alive. Now my closing remarks is to all my brothers and sisters. You see how easy that was? It was simple. But to you, brother polite, we can end this. Don't make no more videos, bro. You're not that strong. This is the best you got? This was the best you had? This was too easy. But the reason why I say don't make no more videos, God, I spared you, brother. For love, for the love I have for you, people were going to protest you, brother, at the debate. And I calmly asked them to stop. If this goes on, it seems like I'm defending the man who's against me. And I tried to protect you to, for the debate to be successful. But we're not debating no more, brother. You still think it's time to play games? But even more than that, this is just something we threw together and it's real simple to refute you. So I got snippets of you contradicting yourself by stacks. Stacks and stacks and stacks. I can do a one-on-one -on -one lesson or uh, um, how to debunk polite one-on-one. -on -one. It's too easy. You talk so fast and you talk too much. Every time you run your mouth, you're going to slip up on something. You always moving impulsively. Impulsively. You have to think and consider. You flashing money around thinking that it's not going to be offensive, but you say that's how the youth talk. But anything you know about this system, man, is that they set us up for failure. And it's not that the brothers and black and conscious people, it's not that we don't have money, it's the fact that we don't have unity while we're not making it out of this system. So if you want to flash money, then why don't you tell them where you got the money from off the backs of who you got it from and ask them if they receive their information or the stuff that they were supposed to receive. See, y'all selling salvation. Us as Hebrews, we're not selling any salvation. We're telling them about how to get spiritual and back to the Creator. Oh, Nasi don't got money. He ain't got stacks like me. I may not have the money you have, brother. I have the love and the unity in my family that I need. I have the power of the Almighty and the Creator. I'm not selling people freedom and sovereignty when I know sovereignty is only to fall under the laws of the true and living Creator. Once you acknowledge God in the U.S., you are sovereign. But you remove God and have them to come through you for sovereignty. I'm not selling people some oregano and pill capitalists and telling them that, yo, you're going to get healed if you take some of these. I'm not the pastor, brother. And I may be a poor righteous teacher. But remember the word righteous. The scepter shall never depart from Judah. Hallelujah.